Right smack dab into the corner of the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. Split my whole forehead. Yeah, Bleeding good. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Daddy panicking and everything, you know. Superman. I'm Superman. Put, yeah. put, you know, you put the towel in it, yeah. tuck it in your shirt. <laughs> yeah. Superman. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Yeah. You know, in, in coming to Christ, one of the things I think that the enemy tries to trick people into believing or to thinking is that they are somehow Superman or Wonder Woman. We think that the Holy Spirit has no role and that it's our job to fix people, to step in and save people, to step in and do whatever it is like a superhero. But one of the things that the enemy doesn't tell people is that they can be worn down to the point. See, we, we, we think that all of the stuff outside of the body of Christ is the stuff that can bring us down or can wear us down or can take us out of God's will. Mm -hmm. Sometimes being Superman and Wonder Woman for Christ, we do it under the banner of Christ, can do that very thing. Mm -hmm. Superman and Wonder Woman. So how do we teach people? How do we teach ourselves? How do we understand? First, we have to understand where this concept comes from. It's really a misinterpretation of the word of God. Oh, no. We can do all things. Mm -hmm. You ever hear people, well, I can do all things. Mm -hmm. Seven days a week. 90, 90 hours a day. I don't mean 90, ain't no 90 hours a day, but 90 hours, I can do all things. Okay. And they say, brother, you can do all things. Mm -hmm. I know you work, this, 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 but I need you to do this, 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 and this. And then you look at that scripture like, well, they do say I can do all things. So maybe he's, and now you're not an enemy got you under a false conviction yes. that you're not doing enough. No, no. Oh, you ain't doing enough as well. So you can do all things. Mm -hmm. But let's look at that in context mm -hmm. of what it's actually saying to us. Yes. Because we are not Superman or Wonder Woman. And we have to remind people of that. We have to remind ourselves of that. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned <coughs> in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. What are you saying, Paul? Whatsoever state I am in, whatsoever condition, whatsoever uh, uh, place that I'm in, I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed to be both full and to be hungry, to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things. Oh, we got to we, we, see people miss that part. I can do all things through Christ. Christ yes. We people forget the through Christ. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through me. I, I, I got it. That's seven days a week, that's what you need. That's seven, four, four, five hours. I, I, no, 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 I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. But now here's the thing. When is Christ strengthening you? How do we, we got to go back to the basis. How do we build ourselves up? Well, we need time alone with God. We need physical rest. There's nobody, I don't care how young, strong, everything. It's too loud, okay. I don't care how long a, a person can work, anybody can be worn down. Anybody can be brought down. So I have to go back to, if it says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, how do I get strong? Well, Jude 20 says, building myself up in the most, in, the, in our, on our most holy faith, praying in the spirit. That's one way, resting. Jesus so many times went off to be with the Father. Right. The Bible says that we're built up. That's right. So we need both physical rest, we need time off. Sometimes you have to tell people, hey brother, what are you doing this week resting? What are you doing tonight? Laying down, watching some TV. Oh, that might not sound spiritual to some people, but that's religion. Mm -hmm. Spiritual people know, crazy self, you better sleep. You better find some time to rest. Yeah. 
You better take that vacation. You better find some rest time and some time alone with God because you're going to need it to be strengthened. That's why people are worn out. Superman had kryptonite. Guess what the Christian's kryptonite is? Not understanding how to balance themselves in the Lord. That's their kryptonite. Kryptonite is something that it, 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 was, it wasn't so much that Superman was, was, was uh, 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 couldn't overcome it. It was that he didn't recognize it. Well, he did recognize because he would come around it. Do you remember the movie? He would, he would come around it. But he knew that that was his weakness. Mm -hmm. that's, some, that's something that's not uh, uh, people don't have the wisdom for because they don't recognize their weakness. Sometimes their weakness is not being able to say no. It's a weakness. You got to say yes to everything. Hey, we have a chicken frying committee over here. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Oh, uh, we have a uh, barbecue on such and such. Well, I'll be there. Oh, uh, we need you to serve. Uh, I'll be there. Uh, sister, we need you to. Uh, 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 that's your kryptonite. Yeah. And now you walking through the door like this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. You ain't got no energy for yourself or for your family. That's not the life that Christ had for. Balance. I can do all, yes, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, but I have to be in a place where Christ can strengthen me. Mm -hmm. I have to spend time in prayer. Yes. You know what, God, I mean, this was this was uh, uh, some years back when God gave me this revelation. And I, and I mentioned this here recently. Every time my phone rang, I felt like I had to answer. Every time I got a text, I felt like I had to respond back. And God said, why are you answering on the whim? Why are you just being available yeah. right, when you're not available to me? Mm -hmm. And he gave me that, and I, and I shared this a couple of weeks ago when I was in the car riding to somebody to minister to somebody. It was lunch and it was business, but it was also ministry. And someone called and God said, no. If I was on the phone, would you click over? Mm -hmm. Hold on, Jesus. <laughs> which, 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 so if you're spending time alone with me, and you stop whatever it is that you're doing to answer that phone or to answer that text or to look at whatever it is. That's what you're saying. Hold on, Jesus. I got something more important to do right now at this moment than talk to you. Somebody else is more important to you. Some This text is more important to you. This social media is more important to you. These video games is more important to you. All of these different things are more important to you because that's what I'm saying when I act out what I act out. And then I'm wondering why I'm not strengthened. I'm wondering why all of these things have victory in my life and wondering why I'm going through all of these things. If the Bible says I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, that means there's some stuff that I can overcome, but I can only come overcome them through Christ. But the enemy won't want you focused on strengthening, being strengthened in Christ. I want you to do some stuff. Do some stuff. Yeah. Get busy. Do, 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 and then, you know, pull up the flyer and we doing this, 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 and I do this, 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 when the last time you sat alone with the Lord in prayer? I ain't got time for that because I do da, 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 wait, wait a second. Worn down. Worn down. Brother gave the statistic yesterday. People came in and said that over 70,000 churches closed last year. Mm -hmm. Some people who was worn down. Mm -hmm. Some people who really didn't have the word in them. There's no retirement in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but here Paul say, well, you know, I'm going to have retirement. When he was getting ready to retire, getting ready to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ran the race, I did whatever, now it's time for me to go on for glory. Hey, no, well, you know, I done served 25 years in the ministry and um, <laughs> I think it's all time for me to go on up to the mountains and uh, really show me that in the scripture, brother, pastor, mm -hmm. retirement plan for Christians after 30 years of service, like a job. Mm -hmm. No, this is till we die. Our last breath. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be ministering, pouring it out. Amen, amen, amen. But that comes from not being strengthened. Mm -hmm. If I don't get regular strength and regular empowerment, yeah, it's easy for me to walk away. It's easy for me to quit. I ain't got nothing in me. It's on me. I'm the Superman. John 15 and 5. John 15. Verse 
very familiar text. I am the vine. I am. He starts the statement off with, I am. The great, I, I am the vine. That means, he's saying, I am the source. Not you, mm -hmm. not your talents, not your abilities, not anything that you can do. I am the vine. I am the source. Yeah. You, you may earn a living, but I am the source of your provision. Mm -hmm. You may have a job, but that's not how I'm providing for you. You might have a business, but that's not how I'm going to provide for you. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you in so many ways that it's not you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. As he told me at Lake Brown about the school. Because I want to show you that I'm the vine. Mm -hmm. And you are the branches. Yes. He that abideth in me. Oh, watch the abide. I got to abide. That means that there's a constant abiding. I have to abide in him. Mm -hmm. I can't step outside of where God is. I got to abide in him. I got to stay in him. Yes. Yes. And I in him. The same Bring it forth, must fruit. Say, you want to be fruitful? Just abide in me. You want to be fruitful? Just abide in me. Like what, the, uh, what I was talking about yesterday, you know, about you know, uh, ministering and doing everything. It's simple. Just abide in me. You got to come up with no new uh, tactic or anything like that. Yeah, God will give us different methods, but the source is still the same. This don't change. He says, I'm the, I'm the source. Abide in me and watch me do the work. And allow me to abide in you. For without me, sometimes people miss this, you can do some things. You can do 90% of the stuff that you're doing. You can do nothing. Nothing. Nothing from nothing. Leaves nothing. You can't do nothing. And you know, and, and I've been there. I'm, I'm human. There's some things that I think, okay, God, I got this. You go ahead and step out here because my talent, my this and my that. And God surely show me. Even the stuff that you do good, I'm going to show you that without me, you can't even do that. Right. Oh, you might have been a good promoter back in the day when you was out in the scene in the club. But I'm the best promoter. I know everybody. I'm Holy Ghost. I can talk to people in their sleep. I can put stuff on people's mind that they ain't even thinking about. I can make people come that ain't even thinking about coming. I can make people do whatever it is I need you. I don't need your help. Oh, you want me to show you? One of the things that God had to reveal to me, sometimes the things that we fail in is not because we didn't try hard enough. It's not because we didn't have the ability or the talent. It was that God was trying to teach us a lesson. I want to show you that it's not your education. I want to show you that it's not your talent. I want to show you that it's not anything other than me so that when it gets done, the only one you're going to be able to point to is me. I don't know how this school got fit. All I know is some people showed up and uh, school automatically. Testimony. The podcast. I wasn't supposed to be I wasn't supposed to be the MC for the podcast. You know what the man did bleed on me. I wore the shirt today. Yeah. I felt led to let or wear the shirt today. The man who is the producer of the podcast, who takes care of everything, had someone tab to be the MC. Mm -hmm. The person who was tabbed to be the MC had already been on radio for years, had a successful show in Miami. Had a lot of people following them, new ex NFL players and everything. But God had to show him and everybody, it's not about that. Kid said, you know what? I think you're my guy. I said, well, hey, I'm willing. Mm -hmm. This is in the line and the vein of what God would have me to do to minister to those who are incarcerated. And if we're going to be doing a show that glorifies the Lord and brings people to Christ, I want to be a part of it. And so they inserted me. But he was showing me. See, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing. Walking in the blessing. Stop looking at your qualifications. Stop looking at your resume. Stop looking at all of your connections. Stop looking at all of that. He's saying, look to me. I am the, I'm the source of everything. He says, I am the, I am the source. And without me, you can do nothing. 
there's some people that are doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. Because we got to remember that Jesus was taken up to a high mountain and the devil showed him all of the kingdoms and said, I could bless you with this. Right. So it was in the power, it was in the power of the enemy to bless him with that. Or not, I don't think it would be a blessing. But to give him that, else it wouldn't have been a temptation. That would have been a lie. If he couldn't give him, he couldn't give him what he was giving him, then it would have been a lie. So it was a real temptation. But guess what the enemy is still doing today? He's giving people the world. He's giving people riches. He's giving people stuff. And they're calling it a blessing, and it's not. If the enemy can give you things, and the things be materialistic, and they look good, and not be a blessing, how much more than the dope boy is blessed? Just because he's riding in a Rolls Royce or a Cadillac. Boy, you blessed. No, he's not. Stop saying that. He's not blessed. He's got some stuff. He may have some wealth, but blessing is not money. It can be a source of blessing to be able to be a blessing, but it's not the blessing. And so in Ephesians, finally, my brethren, 610, reiterating. Finally, my brethren, be strong. I pause there. In my own talent. In my own strength. In my own, in my own ability. In my own intellect. I mean, I got money in the bank. I'll be strong in Nation's Bank or whatever. Man, bank of America, whatever. I'm strong. No, be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. I got to lean and abide in him. He abides in me. That he's the source of my strength. He's the source of the provision. He's the source of my direction. He's the source of my wisdom. He's everything. And so now, I'm totally dependent upon him. And guess what? You know what happens when you're totally dependent on somebody? Have you ever had need somebody to do something and you were just perplexed about it? It wasn't your lane. And you were able to just hand it off to them. And you were just, whew. God saying, guess what? There's a lot of stuff that's not your lane. That if you would just pass over to me, you can do a, whew. Got a lot of people like this. <laughs> it's my lane. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. People have stepped over into God's lane. Put on that cape put on that shield and that Wonder Woman thing and are worn out and wondering why they worn out, anxiety, blood pressure shot on up through the roof. And God said, really? You're not Superman. Newsflash. You're not Holy Ghost. You're not him. Abide in him and allow him to abide in you. Allow him to be the vine and you to be the branch. Guess what the branch do? The branch draws his supply from the vine. Yes. He's not, the branch ain't worried about, well, where I'm going to get my next meal, where I'm going to get my, he's like the vine got that. I ain't got to worry, I'm just a branch. Mm -hmm. I'm just a branch. So, my God, my blank is not God. You fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. My mama <laughs> is not God. My husband, my wife, my sister, my pastor, my elder, my evangelist is not God. People get this so misconstrued. And a part of the problem is the fact that some men of God, even some spouses, have presented themselves as superheroes. We're going to fix it. Some parents, we're going to fix it. Get what it is. It's my job to fix it. Been fixing it since you was five. Mm -hmm. Now that you're 45, I'm still fixing it. Mm -hmm. And God is like, really? When, is, when, is, when are you going to allow me to be what I need to be in their life? When are you going to break that umbilical cord and allow them to rely on me? When are you going to teach them to rely on me? You can't teach them to rely on me if every time they got a problem, you putting on your cake and swooping on in and they looking at you as the source. They looking at you as the mind. Mama, I need uh, you know, seven hundred dollars because I, you know, I just come on by. Yeah. 
you the human vine. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and you have to tell our adult daughters, mm -hmm. this ain't the bank of Brown. Amen. <coughs> Love you. Yeah. And we'll pray for you. Mm -hmm. But if time you want to cash out, mm -hmm. what's up? If you want something to eat, get your nails done, <coughs> we ain't it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Amen. There's some stuff, and see, that's the, that's the thing. If I continue to do it, then you will not develop the fortitude within yourself to want to go get it for yourself. Amen. So now I have to help you develop a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Exodus 23. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You know what the misconception is? The enemy got people thinking that. Well, as long as I don't have a Buddha statue in my living room, as long as I don't have, uh, you know, uh, those other things or gargoyles or something like that, I have a picture of Jesus in my room, so I don't have, I don't have any other gods before God. I just yeah. be clear. But um, don't you, you know, you, you, you refuse to go to church because you got to work seven days a week and you don't want to pick up your Bible because that says yes, but that's not a God, okay? That's... It's not a God. People have made other people gods. If I look to someone else, mm -hmm. and Jesus is going to clarify this as my source, I've made that person out of a God. I look for somebody else to fix it all the time. I look for somebody else to be my provision. I look for somebody else to be my provider. And God is saying, I'm going to break people of that habit. You know how God will break people up that habit? He'll break you because the same person that you've been relying on all of a sudden is in dried up. That's what he did with Elijah. Oh, he was getting fed. He, he wore out of that brook. The ravens was feeding him. All of a sudden the source dried up. Oh, because God wanted to teach a principle that the brook was not the source. Right. No, it was, the, it was always me. Mm -hmm. You thought it was so and so. It was always me. I used them as a channel. But I want to show you that I want to switch channels so that when I switch channels, you'll realize that it's not me, it's not them, it's me. Right. We all know why they stopped doing it. Because it wasn't them. Mm -hmm. And I had to break you. Mm -hmm. Even if it caused you to cry, even if it caused you to be offended, even when it caused you to think that this one should be able to help you and this one should be able to do this and mama should be able to be here. No, 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 no. I want to break you of that because you've made them an idol. You don't realize it, but they're an idol. Mm -hmm. Matthew 10, 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me. He didn't say you couldn't love them. He didn't say you couldn't be there for them. He didn't say that you couldn't help. He, couldn't, he didn't say any of that. He that loveth father or mother more than me. Is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You know how God weeds out the ones who are trusting in that or ones who are loving them more than that? He looks at their reliance so they're willing to compromise. Are you willing to compromise for your son? Are you willing to compromise for mama? Are you willing to compromise for father? I've seen some kids, they're in bondage. And I'm talking about kids who grown, yeah. 30s and 40s. Mama's rule is law. Mm -hmm. Whatever mama say, you know, they'll follow mama before they follow Jesus. Amen. If Jesus say don't do this and mama say do this, well, my mama said, yeah. what? Yeah. Vice versa. Son or daughter one is not worthy of me. How does that play out? There are times when God says, leave it alone. But we got to stick our hand in it. Mm -hmm. I said I got it. Come on. <laughs> now, don't you send him another dime. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> well, uh, I've seen some wives go behind the husband. That husband put his foot down. <laughs> Order in the house. Jesus, the husband. Listen, we ain't sending him. He needs to stand up on his own to be. That's it. Wife go right behind her. Mm -hmm. That's that right there. Yes, sir. You've made an idol. You said, I know what you say, Lord. But I'm supposed to be submissive. But my baby crying. Mm -hmm. 
My baby 55, but he crying. So I'm going to go ahead and step in and, no! But it's that Superman, Superwoman mentality. And we want to fix it. We have to resist the temptation to fix it. Come on now. I said there's some stuff that I never intended for you to fix. And see, I don't want to be in the lane where I'm messing in God's business. Right. Peter, oh, Peter couldn't do it, but he was attempting to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Lord, this <laughs> that ain't going to happen to you. Matter of fact, he almost tried to slice one of the soldiers' ears. Mm -hmm. Peter cut some ears. And Jesus, Jesus, hold on, man. <laughs> wait, wait a second. This has to take place. Mm -hmm. Some stuff has to take place. Mm -hmm. Some suffering is necessary for glorification. I had my mom and my dad in the courtroom. Spent thousands of dollars on an attorney trying to help their baby get out of a situation. But God said, what I'm going to take him through is necessary for the journey. So every effort that you put forth Every dime that you spend is for nothing. You might as well have kept that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But see, that's where the lack of wisdom comes in. Because sometimes if we just pray yeah. and say, Lord, mm -hmm. is this you? Because if this is you, then I need to get my hands out of it and allow you to be God and play the process out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to step in the middle and be like Peter, Lord, when I'm trying to stop something that God has already ordained, even though it don't look like something that I would necessarily want my child, my friend, my sister, my brother to go through. Mm -hmm. But what's best? Luke 14, 26. Same thing. If any man, if any man come to me and hate not, and see that word hate, if you look at the translation, it's not really saying hate. Because obviously God doesn't want us to hate what he's saying is if you don't, if you same thing what he's talking about in, in the other scripture, if you don't, if you love them more than me, you have to make it a lesser love. Abraham had to make it a lesser love. I know you love Isaac now, but you can't love him so much that when I tell you to do something to him, that you'll shrink back. And so when God saw that Abraham was willing to offer his son, he provided a ram in the bush. It was already in God's place. He was testing Abraham. Mm -hmm. You've been waiting your whole life for this blessing. Now when you get it, I'm going to see if you'll give it up just as quick as I gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Do you love the blessing or do you love the blesser? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see. Mm -hmm. And mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters... And yea, his own life. Also, he cannot be my disciple. That means if God says, I want you to go <coughs> to a Muslim nation as a missionary, and you could be killed, I don't want you to change your mind. That means I love my own life more than I love the mission of God. People risk their lives. We look at the first part of Hebrews and, oh, you know, faith without, you know, mm -hmm. substance of things, hope for them. You look at the last part of the uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Go back and look at that. Right. Them people were thrown in lion's dens, eyes gorged out, thrown off cliffs, burned alive, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. But they don't teach that. That ain't, that ain't popular. You know, you tell somebody, listen, you might have to die for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I thank you, but I, 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 can I, where's the Buddha line? Where's the Muhammad line? Because they ain't asking me to. Yeah. That's how people think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even in one of the things, and, and, and it talks about even in, in, even in the marriages and, and spouses, and I know some of there people in the room can attest to this. Sometimes we want to be, we want to fix it. Mm -hmm. She's upset. She's having a bad day. I want to fix it. Mm -hmm. But God has taught me that there's limitations in that. Mm -hmm. I have to pray for her. <clears throat> Or ask her to pray with me so that we can bring Holy Spirit in on the scene because I have to realize that I can't fix everything. Mm -hmm. From an emotional standpoint, that can be difficult. Because as husbands, we're like, man, I want to make her happy. I want to make her, you know, she's upset and she's this. And God is like, but I love her more than you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That may be it. I'm like, okay, well, you're right. But you said your son died perfectly sacrificed you. You perfectly. Perfectly. He knows how much heat to apply. He knows when to pull off. He knows how much. He says, I'll never put any more on you than you can bear. But then again, that same scripture, he can put more on us than we can bear so that we will rely on him. When he says he loves her or loves him more than we do, what he's saying is there are situations where you would have pulled him out. I allow it because my love is perfect. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts higher than your thoughts. So my love is perfect. There are some things that you would have said, no, nah, I don't want her to go through that. And my love, my perfect love says, no, Johnny, it was necessary. So in that, my love is limited by my ability to perceive and see. So now my weapon is to be strengthened by God. So now I have to go into the prayer closet and say, how can I be a better husband to her? The better way to be a better husband is to abide in him, allow him to abide in me, and allow the spirit to lead. Now, it's not on me. The pressure is not on me. And God will say, push, pull, sit down, shut up. There's been times when she's been praying in the closet, and I'm going to go in there and just, because he said, don't you go in there. She with me. And that's the only man now. <laughs> Somebody else tell me that. Who are you talking about? I'm wide. You talking about some good boy now. Yeah. Okay, Lord. And I'll leave her alone. Because I know that that time with him is more necessary than the time with me. I can do a little pat and everything like that, but he can make her whole. So that's the understanding. Then I have to twirlize, take your cape off. Go in the room somewhere, get you a snack or something, or you pray in another room and let her be alone with her God. Amen. First Corinthians chapter three, verses five through seven. <clears throat> Talked about father, mother, wife, sister, brother, all of these different things. We also have to recognize that even church leaders is not God. And so Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 5 through 7, who is Paul? Now you got to remember, Paul wrote the majority of the New Testament. He's even referring to himself in the third person. Because people had got it twisted. They had got it caught up. They had started to look at their leaders as some type of deity. And if your people are not careful, you've seen that. Certain people come to the room and they sit down, they bow, they almost about ready to kiss the hand, hold the robe, everything. Wait, wait a second. Paul clarified, he said, listen, that's dangerous. Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But minister. He minimized. They're but ministers by whom you believe. Even as the Lord gave to every man. These signs are one that shall follow them that believe. There's nothing that I possess on the inside of me that is distinct from what any other believer possesses. Different gifts, same spirit. Different operation, same spirit. Same power. It manifests differently, but it's the same spirit. So why would I say to a, a, a path, and I've seen people do it, and that's the reason why people walk away. Because they didn't see God as God. They saw the pastor, the evangelist, the apostle, the pastor. They said all these people as God. So when this person falls, as men do, because we're men. Man, that, man, I told you that gospel was big. Well, then your relationship was not with God. It was with the man. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. And so God revealed to you that that was your foundation. If your foundation is man, then yeah, you can shut up 70,000 churches. My Bible says that <laughs> the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Like what the, uh, the brother was saying yesterday, Bruce Pollard, he said, now, the, the vast majority of the church may be asleep, maybe, but the remnant is strong. There's a remnant of believers that we pay back. We got some strong backbone. We standing in the Lord. We're abiding in him. 
and we're still going to do the work. I have planted, verse 6, Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So, hey, you know, listen, stop marveling at the people that's planting and the people that's water. Thank God for them. But if God don't give the increase, you can plant all you want to. You can water all, you can water till it's saturated in the ground. You can bring a hurricane in with a whole bunch of boatload of water. If God don't give the increase, you're going to look at that ground tomorrow and it's still going to be like, oh, that's the water in it. I, I prayed for it. I sat out with him. I took him out to eat. I worshiped. I brought him to church. I did everything. God got to give the increase. People are so convinced that their programs, that their smoking, uh, that their smoke and lights and the great show and everything, they're so convinced that that's what's changing people's lives. It's always been and it will always forever be the Holy Ghost. And to show people that, he will allow all of that stuff, all of 70,000 churches, I guarantee you some of them churches had some of that stuff in there. They had all types of great uh, children's ministry and this, that, and other, but still shut up 70,000 of them. I said, I'm going to show you that without me, you can do nothing. You might have had a great motivational speaker up there every Sunday and people shouting and dancing in the aisle, but without me, you can do nothing. So, it, so then it is neither he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. <clears throat> That's why we have to resist the temptation to when we don't see the manifestation of our planting and our watering to get us to thinking that we're not operating according to God's plan. We think that because we don't see fruit in the time that we think we should be seeing fruit, mm -hmm. that our planting and watering was for not. No, 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 no. God gives the increase in his time. God's not on our timetable. We think he is. We think, well, okay, this person, I'm talking to this person for a week now, two weeks now. Uh, they seem to be warming up. I've been talking to them at church. I invited them out to lunch. She shed a tear. Surely she should want to follow me to church. No, 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 no. No. That don't mean nothing. Your seed and watering may not, God, God may not give the increase to a year from now. That person may switch jobs. You may never hear it. You just keep doing the work. Why? I don't want you to get to thinking that it's you. If you think that it's you, you'll continue to put your cape on, you'll continue to put your Wonder Woman shield on, and you'll continue to go out and fight this evil that only I am able to overcome. Amen. You're a farmer. Amen. The farmer, all he got, all, the only thing under the farmer's control is to plant and hold and do whatever he can. He can't make it rain, and he ain't got no control over that sun. That's the increase. So, we have to realize that men of God, or women of God, are still men. We have to, we have to really, re this is where <clears throat> people, like I said, get into a fence. They walk away from the faith. They stop fellowshipping. <clears throat> or, they're burning up their pastor's phone evangelist, a sister, they see a strong sister in law, I'm going to burn your phone up because I know you can pray. But one of the things I got to be able to do, no, nah, you need to pray for yourself. Yeah. It ain't about my words and what I say because again, it's God, it's the spirit. So the thing to empower them with is the same spirit you see me operating in, you got it. It's available to you. It's available. To you. <clears throat> I'm not a superwoman. I'm not a wonder woman. I'm not a superman. No, don't look at me with, with a cape. Because I lean and depend on the same God that you hear me praying to. Guess what? You got it. Men are still, men of God are still men. And so, in 1 Kings 18, 21 through 22, <clears throat> we look at a man of God. One of my favorite prophets in the Bible, Elijah. Here he is with a challenge. He's facing hundreds of prophets. And it 
it's just him. Outnumbered, outgunned, outmanned, out everything. But yet Elijah spoke in boldness when he said, and Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long shall ye halt between two opinions? He said, How long are we gonna do this? How, how long are we gonna how long are we gonna wrestle between whether God is God and whether you are God, or whether your bank is God, whether the, 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 your provision, your husband, your wife, how long are we gonna halt between these two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. <clears throat> Something about truth that makes people silent. Yes. It's like a brother that was talking about, I forget who I was listening to, uh, it was a pastor, he was saying that this, 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 this uh, interviewer tried to corner him with the question and said, what's your opinion on homosexuality? He said, I don't have an opinion. He said, I, when I got saved a long time ago, I, I stopped all my opinions. I go with what the word of God says. Yeah. And so the interviewer, shut up. Like, what, what, oh, I was trying to corny. <laughs> they don't want to dispute the Bible. The Bible is absolute. That's right. I don't care what school you go to, four plus four will always be eight. Yeah. Now you can try to make it nine. Make it 10, but it still don't make it right. Four plus four will always be eight. The Bible will always say what it says. The truth will always be the truth. So he was trying to get him into an opinion. Yeah. He's like, no, I don't have an opinion. Mm -hmm. What the word of God say? Yeah. Interview, okay, well, let's uh, let's let's wrap it up. Uh, <laughs> oh, now you want to wrap the interview up. Mm -hmm. Then Elijah said unto the people, I, even I alone, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. <clears throat> One against hundreds. Mm -hmm. So let's look at 26 through 29. So now Elijah gives them a challenge. Talking about an offering, a sacrifice. If your God is able to burn the sacrifice up, then your God is God. If my God is, I'm paraphrasing, then my God is God. And so, <clears throat> and he took the bullock which was given them and dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even unto noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But no voice, but there is no voice. And nor nor any that answered. And they leaped on the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon, Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or pursuing or is in a journey or pre adventure, he sleepeth and must be awakened. <coughs> and they cried aloud. And cut themselves after the manner with knives and lancets till blood gushed out of them. And it came to pass when midday was past, they prophesied until the time <clears throat> of the offering of the evening sacrifice. And there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. <clears throat> so here's Elijah saying, listen. Call out to your God. Sacrifice. They cut themselves. Oh, oh, hell, hear him. Oh. You got people that, you know, I'm going to burn this sage and it's going to ward off evil. You ain't warding off nothing. All you're doing is stinking up the house. <laughs> people going to the astrology to find out when they're going to meet their husband, when they're going to meet their wife, when they next child. They're doing all of this stuff. And God allowed them to do Go ahead. See how that worked out. You're not going to retain any real peace. You're not going to have any real stability, real success. So I'm going to allow you to go ahead. And so Elijah was mocking them. Like, listen, maybe he's asleep, maybe he's on a long journey. You know, you got to yell louder because he, he's a god. So maybe he's up there talking to the other gods or something. Like, y'all got to do better than that, man. Because Elijah knew in all boldness 
then there was never going to be an answer from their God. 1 Kings 19, 1 through 4. <clears throat> I want you to know that the end of the story, we, we all know this, that God, of course, showed up. Elijah poured water on the fire, a bunch of water, and it licked up the water. Everything was burnt up. It was, it was completely consumed. God showed himself strong on behalf of him who was trusting in him and in his work. God revealed that he was God. Something happened. Somewhere between the sacrifice, he's standing up to these hundreds of prophets, he's bold, but then he gets a call from Jezebel. Let's make it 2021. He gets a text message. You just, it's, it's, it's 300 people slain in the spirit. You just, you cast out demons and everything else and all of this stuff. And you get a call from one of your rivals or somebody from back in the day. They say, listen, Joe, I'm going to kill you. God just worked. Like a miracle. That's not even okay. You know, some miracles. You know, maybe my ankle was swollen, and then after the meeting, it was, was not swollen. You know, that's not to discount that, but that's you know, this is fire from heaven. Like I can't even. This happened. This ain't fair to So if you can imagine, you ain't you around, and then there's water, and then there's wood, and everything, and then you speak, and then the fire the whoosh. That's what just happened. Now, if that just happened, and I know that my God did that, I don't know if I'm going to be afraid of no Jezebel. But then I don't know because, you know, Elijah, he's, he's in this moment. But for whatever reason, we'll see what happened. And they have told Jezebel that Elijah had, well, that all that Elijah had done, and lo, he had slain all the prophets with the sword, then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as one of them by tomorrow this time. Jezebel, basically, she, you know, she talked gangster. All right, I heard what you did. My husband told me what you did. But guess what? The same way they died, you're going to get it. Now you would think Elijah would be like, man, I just called fire. God just made fire down him. When he saw that, he arose and went for his life. And he came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he rest, requested of himself that he might die. Elijah forgot where the source of his victory came from. See, sometimes the enemy wants to try to bombard you with one thing after another. And when he does that, the bombard with one thing after another, the whole thing is when he talks about it, talks about in the in Revelation how the, the Antichrist wants to wear down the saints. It's the same spirit. I want to wear you down. I want you to take a deep breath because you just got a victory and then get a phone call. Because the phone call represents the suddenly, the suddenly represents an opportunity for you to think that that last victory is on God, but this next one is on you. And sometimes if we're not careful, we get into that mind state. No, God wants to handle everything. Don't look at anything that's on your plate. Don't look at anything that's on the table. Don't look at any challenge. Don't look at anything that's before you as something that you have to do. That's something that you... And Elijah was like, man, I'm tired. And I've been there. He didn't man, Oh, Lord, something else? Oh, man, this is... Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I just got finished with the folk punning some uh, prophets of Baal. And, and all that, now just about another, another war, another battle, another challenge. And he requested himself that he might die. And he said, it is enough now. It's enough. Lord, it's enough. I'm, I'm, it's enough. 
Oh, Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers. Again, he pointed to himself. I am not better than my fathers. I, 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 I'm not like sister so, so I'm not like brother so I'm not like pastor so I'm not like that I'm, 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 I'm a guy says no you're right you're not but I'm not going to do it according to your power according to your strength just look at back at what I just did look at the miraculous that I just did look at the miraculous that I have been doing look at all of the doors that I've been opening. look at all of the things that I've been doing and then anticipate the next challenge being taken care of like the last one was. You think Jezebel is some match for me? Don't get it twisted. That's what our God was saying. Don't, don't get it twisted now. I'm still God now. I don't care who Jezebel is. I know she's been doing some stuff in the kingdom. I know she's strong and everything like that, but she's still a created being. Satan is not equal to God. He is a created being. Thank you. We've already received the victory. We can speak to him through Christ, and he has to flee. Yes, amen. Yeah. Verse 14, 9, excuse me. Going to 14. Verse 9 in the same chapter. And he came thither into a cave. And lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? God, what you doing? God attacked you on your, you crying and snotting in the cold. <laughs> what are you doing? Am I not God? I'm God. We, we say that with him, like, you know, he's God. God. Not president, not king, not creative. He's God. There is no authority on earth, heaven, underneath heaven, that is over God. He's over everything. He can speak and it's gone. It's done. He says, I'm that. I'm the I am. He was so big that he said, I am. Because you, you had to fill the I am. You, you fill in the blank. I am. Whatever it is that you think that you need a desire or want, I am that. Well, Lord, this person bothering me. I just need somebody. To, I'm that. Well, this person is causing me this, and this person is causing me that. I am. So what are you doing? That's how God is with us. What, what, what you crying for? What you worried for? What you pulling your hair out? Why is you spending time with this stuff when I'm already taking care of some stuff? Just look back at what I just took care of in your life. Just look at the stuff that I've done. Now look at what I'm going to do. Anticipate it. And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I alone only, and left and seek, and they seek my life to take it. <clears throat> and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount, and behold, the Lord passed by. God meets us right where we are. God knew that Elijah's emotions were kind of getting out of whack, they were taking, taking over. God gave Elijah a supernatural encounter reminder. Sometimes God does that to us. He gives us a reminder. He gave us a reminder. I know you weren't supposed to get funding for it, but I'm going to do it on the last day. I know that they were supposed to do something, but I'm going to do something. All of those things are reminders. Elijah was looking, if you look at the scripture, and then sometimes, you know, you can read it and you get different things and whatnot. What I, what I, my take is that Elijah was almost like trying to invoke sympathy upon God. Yeah. Lord, I'm doing all this stuff for you. I'm the one way. The people out there, they ain't doing that. I said, no. I'd rather have mercy than sacrifice. You, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to cry and stop. You're a child of God. You, you're a king. Do you, 
There's no time, unless maybe it's something he wants special, that AJ's had to shed a tear to get food or to ask us to stay in the house. and that, All that's provided for because we love him. That's our son. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Josiah. Josiah, oh, oh, I want something. You're going to give him something. That I'm not. not the only thing, he may be trying to cry for something that he wants, yeah. you know, but he's going to get fed, yeah. roof over his head. So God is saying, I'm going to provide for you. Yes. You don't have to grovel on the ground. You're not a beggar. I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. He said, all you've got to do is ask. You're a king's kid. You're a child of the king. I am God and you are my child. And I just showed you, Elijah, what I do for you. So what you doing? But Elijah felt the need to tell him, you know, all these people, they didn't bow down and they just said, I'm the only one and everything. So God took them up to the mountain Lord passed by in a great wind, rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rock before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind and the earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And the earthquake and the fire, the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small, still voice. Sometimes when God is trying to talk to us, we're looking for it. And that's, you got people who they seek that. You know, it's almost like that spiritual high. I I gotta be fall out in the spirit. I, I got I gotta I gotta I gotta I gotta you know I gotta feel like I'm crying. I gotta feel like a burning sensation. And sometimes God will speak to you through somebody and it's just a small still voice. It's just plain. God say do this. And because, you know, maybe fire didn't come out the person's mouth or, or the angels didn't appear and hallelujah, huh, you think that it wasn't God. And God said, Yeah, I spoke to you through the system. He spoke to you plainly. He didn't have an ear. Let him hear. Mm -hmm. You got to be listening. So that's all of these things. And, but God went in all of those. He said, a small, still voice. Mm -hmm. And when it was so, Elijah heard it and wrapped his face in a mantle and went out and stood and entering the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, he asked him again. What doest thou here, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? And he said, I have been very jealous. And he repeated it. <laughs> because the children of Israel have forsaken that covenant and thrown down the altars and, and I slain all the prophets with the sword. <coughs> and, I, and they seek after my life to take it away. I stop there, but God goes on to tell him that, listen, I got a remnant that have not bowed their knees to, to Baal. That's right. It's not as bad as what you're saying it is. Yeah, it's a lot of people that's not doing this and not doing that and this that, but there's some people, there's a remnant of people that are still doing my work. There's a remnant of believers that are still doing what I asked them to do. There's a remnant of people that still believe. They still believe. <clears throat> but what God was showing me and showing us in this scripture between 18 and 19 that even Elijah is not Superman. Mm -hmm. Elijah was talking noise to the prophets of Baal. Listen, maybe he going off on a journey. Maybe he done this. Maybe you need to call, man. Go ahead. I'll sit back and wait. And then when the time came, okay, oh man, I got so much faith in God. I'm not just going to put a dry sacrifice there. Man, put some barrels of water on there. I'm going to make it even more impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then God shows up. But then in the next verse, he get that message from Jezebel and now he's ready to die. Mm -hmm. Men of God who reveal their humanity. <clears throat> David slept with Bathsheba. Had her husband killed. Peter denied Jesus and cursed. Mm -hmm. Moses struck the rock instead of speaking to him, although I would have been yeah. tempted to Listen, I'm sorry, Moses. You have some grace. Send some, some boy. Look at here. Sit around and listen to all that complaining. <laughs> all day, every day. Oh, they all joking. Here you go. No, okay. <laughs> and the list is still being made today. Why? Why would God show us David, who was a man after God's own heart, but yet in a moment of weakness, 
sleep with Bathsheba and have her husband killed. Revealed to us that someone who had walked with him and Peter for three and a half years that had seen blind eyes open, the dead raised, and all of these things could still in a moment of weakness deny him and curse. He was showing us all of these things to remind us that we're not Superman, we're not Wonder Woman, and that it will always remain and rely on his strength. The moment that we get to the point to where we think that we're doing anything on our own, we're setting ourselves up for a fall. The moment that we think that any success that we received was because we did anything, we're setting ourselves up for a fall. He even told the children of Israel there were certain things that he wasn't going to He said, because lest you vaunt yourselves up and say that my own hand have brought me the deliverance. And so I thank God for allowing me to fail in so many areas of my life. I thank God for allowing me to see that it's not me. It's not you, Johnny. It's not you. I'm doing this. It's not any of us. When he opens doors, when he expands, when he does what he does, the only person we'll be able to point back to, how did y'all, how did this, the man said something yesterday that was so profound. He said, I've been in mega churches with over three and 4,000 people. He said this probably, he said it here briefly, I don't know if everybody caught it. He said, but I've never seen a group this large of people that want to do prison ministry. Yeah. He said, even in a church of three or 4,000, I would never get this many. God. The Lord is going to do it. Lift me up. I'll draw. Right. And then, <clears throat> I didn't have a great advertising scheme. I didn't just, I just prayed and said, Lord, whoever you would have to say, and they came. Yeah. <laughs> My Superman, I'm not Wonder Woman. Yeah. And that sometimes, in, in closing, that's what we have to remind ourselves. Because some people, you know, they, they'll say, I'm to my wit's end, great, you're in a great spot to be in. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're at your wit's end, then that means the power of God can now move. Mm -hmm. Because you're at the end of your abilities. You're at the end of your strength. Mm -hmm. I did all I can for this child, and she just had a, like, he just, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to give you over to the Lord. Great, that's what you should have done in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we got practical things to teach you. You got some things to educate you in and everything like that. But at the end of the day, you're going to stand before God by yourself. I ain't going to be that holding your hand. But you're going to have to give an account mm -hmm. to what you did with what you heard, what you've learned. That's right. That's right. God ain't going to be looking back like you sent this child up here and he don't know such a... No. He's going to be looking like either... <clears throat> Well done, my good and faithful servant, or depart from me. I never knew you. But it's going to be on them. And so, in that, praise God for the, for the opportunity to be one of the ministries where men and women who are coming home, once we get the information in the, and they set everything up so that we can have a point of contact for them here, but then reminding the people as their mentor. You know, and as they're they're in position to help people, <clears throat> that's how man you got some plan. You know, I wonder what you can do. What you can do, but then you still have to allow God to be God. And one of the things that I uh, <clears throat> I'm going to share, as the Spirit was speaking to me about this endeavor, one of the leaders over the entire project for the state of Florida, we were actually one of the one of the first of a few churches that are actually the first sites to receive the train to receive the banner, banner, whatever, baton, so to speak. St. John, yeah, you know, I, I was listening to the training, and I was a little, I felt a little overwhelmed and, and everything like that, and I said, yes, you know, it's a lot trying to, you know, find mentors and everything like that, but then even resources, and then what God reminded me, two fish, five loaves of bread, Take what you have, put it in my hand, and trust me to multiply. Because that happened. Can you imagine? There's 5,000 people out here, and God say, now I want y'all to feed all the people. Mm -hmm. And we looking at 
two fish and five loaves of bread. We're like, hold on, God, is this a trick question? Is something spiritual I'm supposed to get out of this? What you mean? There's 5,000 people out there. Ain't no way to two fish and these five loaves of bread. You bring it to me. And they, as they went, though, that was the obedience. See, sometimes we want to wait till we get it. God says, go before you get it, and I'll increase it as you go. Just go. And so as we move forward, God says, I'm going to increase. And then you'll be able to point back to, well, how did y'all do all of this? We'll be able to point back to the two fish and the five loaves of bread, which was, we just didn't, we didn't have but a little. But what we did have, God increased it because of our obedience to go and feed the multitude. And I said, God is going to bring the mentors. God is going to bring the resources. God is going to bring everything that we need to do what we need to do. But God says, I don't want you to wait. I want you to get started. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. So at this time, 